because as you said, uh, not all activities are, are equal here. And uh, there's definitely different industries, companies that are going to respond better to certain types of messaging. I'll use my cell phone as, a, as an example. In my personal life, if you shoot me an email versus a text, I'm pretty much 100% going to answer that text first. Initiating becoming a hiring machine sequence in three, two, one. Hey everyone, it's Sam Keenly and welcome to Becoming a Hiring Machine. This is the show dedicated to fixing recruitment by going beyond saying what needs to change and instead teaches you how to make that change. Today, we've got a great Tactical Tuesday ahead of us, but before we get into that, I just wanna tell you a little bit about the show. Essentially, we've got shows within the show here. Some days we have interviews with industry thought leaders and others who are shaking up the space. Other days we cover trending topics. Drop by every Tuesday like today for a Tactical Tuesday episode where we go deep on how to do something that's going to help you drive better results in your day to day. Some days we open it up for Q&A. Listeners can drop in questions that they'd like to hear us take on. So send those to us at podcast at loxo.co. And occasionally hear a mic drop episode from Matt where he stops by to share something that he's been thinking about within the recruitment space and wants you to know. All right, today we are continuing the five episode mini series on all things reporting. We have Logan Heck, one of our CSM team leads, joining us again to go over the essential things that we need to know. So today's episode is going to revolve around outreach, engagement, everything that you need to know there, how to report on it, all of the fun. So with that, grab a pen and paper, pull out your notes app, and let's get into it. Logan, welcome back. Hey, Sam, how are you? Good, good, good. Our fun series continues. So reporting meets outreach and engagement. So this can span candidate engagement, business development engagement, and outreach efforts. So starting from the top, why should you be reporting on items related to like outreach and engagement, no matter what the area it is? Yeah, uh, I think there's a couple different avenues that people are gonna use this reporting for. Um, you know, I always uh, make a joke, and when, we, when I talk to some customers about this, it, it seems like that, uh, Corporate, corporate sales, like, you know, micromanaged tracking. Um, and I, I think you can get out of that headspace because what you're really looking at is coaching opportunities and to address any bottlenecks that might be happening in your process. Um, and I think it's a good way that you can look at, uh, not necessarily, you know, did Logan do however many calls per week, but to an extent, yeah, you kind of are because, if Logan, you know, down the road is uh, falling short on any sort of uh, metric, you know, whether it might be placements, uh, submittals, interviews, you name it, you can always look back and say, well, you know, Logan, you've been making 100 less calls uh, than the rest of the team per week. So, you know, I think it just offers good coaching opportunities. And then even a step further is maybe I'm up to par uh, in terms of metrics, but I'm still not meeting uh, you know, maybe a placement goal. So you can then start to look into the messaging uh, that you're sending out, right? So how you're utilizing outreach, the emails you're sending, are you using the person tags, you know, personalization features, I should say. Um, and then what's the nature of those calls? You know, is it uh, where I'm calling and uh, sound like a robot so people aren't <laughs> going a step further? Uh, or is it something where I'm being engaging uh, getting candidates excited, clients for that matter as well about particular uh, job opportunities. Yeah, so I mean, it all, it makes sense when you think about it. It's just, it's adding data, it's adding visual, it's adding context to some of the things that you either know or things that you should know to inform the decisions that you want to be making for yourself, for your team moving forward. So if we were to go down a level now, so what are some of the different insights that these reports can help you Bring, I know you kind of touched on a few of them, but like if we were to list out just like three insights that you would want to be pulling out of these that we'll get into with some of our reports in a minute, what might some of those be? I would say uh, number one is looking at outreach against particular jobs um, and seeing, you know, what how much uh, outreach efforts are going by job. Uh, you know, I think that's a place that you can start to diagnose uh, if there's any jobs that you look across the board and see, okay, there's it's been very low engagement on this job um, and it's been sitting in queue for a couple months. It might be something we want to pick up. So I'd say that's a big one. Um, another one that you can look into uh, is going to be, you know, on an individual level um, and seeing, you know, the level of engagement, maybe per recruiter, per BD, uh, 
person that you might have on your team. Uh, and then the third one I would say is just tracking goals um, and looking at, you know, rather than just saying uh, you're doing this, you're doing that, setting a real goal that makes sense for the team. Uh, and I think those are ones that you can use these reports to start to figure out what a real goal means. Uh, instead of, you know, pulling it out of a hat and saying, I want X amount of activities or X amount of outreach campaign sent, start to see what's effective. You know, if it's there um, over time, you're going to start to see a certain number uh, that's going to be, we'll call it the magic number. Uh, and then that's what you can start to set a goal with. Uh, and and have it be realistic, because I think, Sam, I'm sure you've been in a role before. I think everybody everybody has, and uh, if you've at least been in the tech space, that you've, you're given an unrealistic KPI. Uh, and there's nothing more frustrating than just trying to reach a number to reach a number. Exactly. So it's one thing to say what gets measured gets managed. But then it's like you said, it's adding reality into that equation and knowing that magic number. And then it's, OK, how do we... How do we multiply this and power the team with that, but in a way that's manageable, doable, and it doesn't burn them out? So exactly. I really like that. All right. So let's get into three reports that people can look at as they as they think about outreach and engagement. So we're going to start with one. It's really high level. You can do this with any platform at all. And then we'll we'll get into two specific ones. You'll jump in with Loxo and show exactly like what they are, how you'd set them up. So the high level report is what I just kind of want to call it. It's like your attempt success report where you can look at this by email, you can look at this by text, you can look at this by call, you can look at this by in-mail outreach, but it's it's understanding that basic initial funnel of if I sent 100 emails, how many opens did I have? How many replies did I have? And understanding, okay, of those outreach efforts, you know, the open rates, the click rates, the reply rates, what is working for you? And so one, you're going to want to compare that channel by channel to understand, you know, not all activities are created equal. 100 calls is not the same as 100 in mails. We all know that. I, I think that we would probably attest to that, that that's pretty clean. And so when you have that type of information, you can then even go a step further where you could break this out by the different jobs that you're working, the different role types that are being hired for. Is it a marketing role? Is it a CS role? Is it a programming role? You can do it by the hiring company, by the industry to really start to understand the differences and nuances between all of those. And you can then compare it. If I'm a, if I'm a 360 desk recruiter, I know I'm going to see better engagement rates with these industries, with these job types. Now they have so much time on today. So let's probably take more of these types of roles versus another one. And then the other side of it is the omni-channel approach. So if you want to get the best results, you need to understand what channels are working best for you and then apply them at the correct time at the correct stage. So knowing I'm not just going to do a hundred calls and call it at that, but if I send an email first and then a text and then a call, you know, I, I know that usually when that's step three, they're much more likely to answer it, have a good response, get the job, get the candidate on the phone he wants to talk. So you can pull this from any platform that you're using. This isn't a Loxo specific. Again, it's more just making sure you have the analytics from wherever you're doing these types of outreach efforts from and then aggregating it back together. Obviously, there are platforms like ours that make it easy when it's all going out of one platform, but it, it's not something that has to be done within Loxo per se. No, absolutely. And to you, one of your points I think you made is super important is, you know, you can look at it from, you know, a glance, right? And you can just start to boil down the numbers that are working, but then you're also starting to look at, or maybe starting to segment by what jobs uh, and what's maybe companies or industries is outreach, it, are the different types of outreach being becoming more effective? Uh, because as you said, uh, not all activities are, are equal here. And uh, there's definitely different industries, companies, um, hiring managers, you name it, uh, that are going to respond better to certain types of messaging, you know, uh, and it's, I'll use myself and as a, as an example, um, you know, in my personal life, if you shoot me an email versus a text, I'm pretty much 100% going to answer that text first. So, you know, it's just a matter of managing that. Yeah. And I've heard this from healthcare recruiters, especially time and again, they're like, people will ask them, why are my in-mail response rates so low? It's like, well, when, when are these people going to be on LinkedIn? But they're like, if you text them, they've got their phones on them all the time, more or less. But if you text them at two in the afternoon when they're in surgery, when they're seeing patients, good luck getting a response. But if you know to text them off hours at different times, you're going to do that. So again, these are the different things where you can look at channels and subsets of the data to understand when to make the most of the outreach that you're doing. Absolutely. Yep. And as you know, one one further point on that is you want to make sure uh, 
you're not making people angry. Uh, because Huge. I know myself, uh, you know, I'm not a surgeon, uh, but if I was in surgery and uh, or anything of that nature, busy, you, whatever it is, uh, and I'm getting texts at, or emails or whatever, and I'm doing something, yeah, chance of getting a response is, is probably pretty low. Yeah, that's such a great point. Yeah, the knowing that yeah, the interruption side of it, keeping that in mind, it's just, yeah, if I were them, would I reply? So amazing point there, because yeah, like, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. Excellent, excellent addition. All right, next report. This is where you're going to start going in and showing us, like, if you wanted to build it yourself, if you really want to understand how to set it up, we're going to use Loxo as the example here. So I'll let you pull up your screen and then kind of talk through what you're seeing, the variables you're clicking, the charts that it's showing, and we'll go from there. So uh, to kind of begin here, what we did was just looked at a very kind of high level activity report, um, but more focused around uh, the outreach and engagement uh, piece of it versus maybe like a workflow stage or uh, maybe some of those job specific, you know, submitting, interviewing, et cetera. So you can see here, it's just filtered out by those activity types. Um, and then below what we're going to see is, and, and this is again, just personally how I like to do it. You can, uh, as we talked about on the first podcast, there's many different uh, ways that you can kind of break down and look at this data. I'm a bar graph guy. Uh, so I definitely like looking at this. I think it's just the easiest way for me to digest. Uh, but what I did here was grouped by who logged uh, any of these activities and then segmented by the activity type. And when I look at this report, what this, you know, and sorry, before I get into this, one thing you might want to do and add uh, <clears throat> is maybe a job or a particular company that you're looking to look at, or excuse me, look at these statistics across. Um, for the sake of just kind of looking at it here, it's going to be a bit more high level. So what I would look at this and could potentially draw is um, levels of engagement just across the board. Um, and I think from a coaching perspective, this might be something where if I'm looking at this and I see, okay, you know, uh, Paulina is uh, crushing it. You know, she is getting placement after placement. And I come in here and look, well, she's has, you know, the most engagement of our team. Uh, Logan might be somebody that is struggling a little bit and just w look here and see, okay, well, he's had quite a bit less overall engagement and touch points with candidates. So let's see maybe uh, where we can help uh, to get that engagement out. And that might even just be a matter of learning how to use outreach and automating process. Um, and then I think you could even go a step further and start to look at what's the messaging that Logan is sending out um, and then comparing it to Paulina's and starting to implement uh, what she's doing for myself so that I can get up to speed with her uh, performance. Mm -hmm. And what I like about this chart too, is that by each individual, it breaks out the type of activity they're doing in different colors. So you can see, you know, if the, one of the, the best reps is using a lot, like the person who's making those placements, they have more email send than calls making. And then you go and look at a lower performance, they're making a lot more calls and fewer emails. You can use that to inform some of the coaching recommendations as well in a very easy to understand visual where, you know, going back to not all activities are created equal. This is a perfect way to sub segment by that and view it quickly. Yeah, I think that covers, you know, from the, the initial activity report. So I know the next report that you then want to get into is, okay, you have a baseline of what everyone's doing. Now, how do you go about setting, we were talking about that magic number earlier, and, and you were telling me before, like a goal report is the next thing that you really like to use for, for building off of this. Yeah. So again, kind of a uh, personal preference of mine and, you know, not saying that this is uh, the, the absolute way you have to do it, but I do like to build out some dashboards, kind of having our raw data here versus a goal right next to it. Um, and so what I did here was we just did a goal activity report. And essentially I just used the same activities uh, that we were looking at in the previous report. And I'll show you here, uh, again, logged by everybody. And then same to your point, what you were talking about is this monthly, uh, it could be monthly, weekly, quarterly, or yearly uh, metric that you're looking to track. I find that that is different from team to team. There are some folks that like to look at it a bit more on a weekly basis, uh, maybe versus a monthly. 
And I don't think there's a right or wrong. I think it's just a matter of what works for the team and what's, you know, a time frame that's more manageable. Uh, so for the sake of this example, I just did monthly. And what we're looking at here is 200 count uh, of any of these activities. Um, and so what we'd be able to see is kind of across the team, a percent goal uh, ver on all of these activities. And what this I think can tell you is you know, if we get to the end of a month and it's we're saying, man, we really had some, uh, we're a little off our placement revenue goal uh, for the month. Well, we can always come in here and say, well, uh, you know, 25% would obviously be <laughs> very low, but let's say we're at 67% um, of a particular goal. And that's something I think you can begin to pinpoint and say, well, maybe we weren't uh, up to the level of engagement uh, that we needed to be. And so you can then start to, uh, from this graph below, you can sort by particular activities uh, and then maybe even export it and start to really diagnose like where uh, the most activities were happening and where you might need to pick up on other activities. So again, just giving you a view uh, or another tool to utilize uh, for a team. And even if you're a one, one man show, uh, one man or woman show, excuse me, you have the ability uh, to look here and say, okay, I need to pick up my engagement if I'm hoping to get more placements this month. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Yeah, as you were saying that, that was something that I immediately thought about was, you know, you can do this from the manager team level to understand total activity, and then you can break it up to each individual and give them their own goals. So knowing the activities that they are most successful with, you can say, you know, I want you to do 200 activities this week, or you can say, knowing your magic number, I need to make 30 calls, I need to do 40 emails, I need to do 20 emails and 10 texts. You can start to do that. And then you can quickly know to your point earlier, it's like, why aren't I hitting my goal or why am I achieving it? You can quickly see what's the gap between what you know is your magic number and what you need to make up in order to achieve that. Yeah, absolutely. And one other cool thing you can do um, from this report here is, <clears throat> you know, I think we touched on this last time, but rather than going in and having to recreate this report on an individual level, you know, what I could do here is if you did want to break this out, you know, by person, you can come in here uh, and I'm just going to use Paulina and you can adjust the number for an individual level. So for her, we'll say it's 50. We can update that. And then instead of, you know, having to get rid of what the team or report, we can come here, save as new, and then add that to individual dashboards, add it to team boards, uh, but we're maintaining the original goal report as a team. And then you can start to just build individual goals uh, if that was something you want to look at as well. Mm -hmm. That's genius. And that is the epitome of you working smarter than me and not harder because it's like, yeah, you have that initial report, just do these couple filters and that makes it way easier than going and building them one by one. So um, love that tip. There was, that's a two for one right there, people, if you didn't, if you didn't catch that one. So definitely make note of it. All right. Well, these were three really helpful reports. I mean, if, if I'm thinking even from marketing, like biz dev, these are still going to be just as helpful. So any, whether it's candidate side, client side, prospect side that you're, you're working towards, absolutely make use of these. And, um, yeah, it'll, it'll just make your, your life much easier to understand why are things going well? Why aren't things going well? What do I need to do to, to, you know, update? my current processes. So this has been fun. I'm, I'm so glad you could join us. You know, I learn something new every time you, you come on Lisa, hopefully inspires some recruiters to start incorporating these into their day to day moving forward. And then stay tuned. We've still got episodes four and five to come as well. So as we wrap, Becoming a Hiring Machine is a production of Loxo. If you like this episode, we're going to link over to a similar one if you're not sure where to go next. You can find show notes in the description of your favorite podcast streaming platform, as well as on our website, loxo.co slash podcast. We do have full video episodes available, so definitely recommend, especially for ones like this, where we're going through and showing you how to create and build reports. And then if you have questions, if you're looking for advice, send that to us, podcast at loxo.co. So, all right, everyone, that's the show. That was yet another great Tactical Tuesday with Logan. Until next time, bye, y'all. Hey, everyone.